there and we're exploring new testing. We're leading the world in testing uh, and we will continue to do so. Hey, Haley, I have yes. a question of my own. Mm -hmm. Last July, President Trump declared himself the least racist person there is anywhere in the world. Why does he use racist phrases like the Kung Flu? Uh, the president doesn't. The, what the president does do is point to the fact that the origin of the virus is China. It's a fair thing to point out as China tries to ridiculously rewrite history, ridiculously blame the coronavirus on American soldiers. This is what China is trying to do. And what President Trump is saying, no, China, I will label this virus for its place of origin. That's what he's saying by using the racist phrase, Kung Flu? He is linking it to its place of origin. What does he have to and say to uh, uh, Asian Americans who are deeply offended and worried that his use will lead to further attacks of discrimination? So the president has said very clearly it's important that we totally protect our Asian community in the U.S. and all around the world. They're amazing people and the spreading of the virus is not their fault in any way, shape or form. They're working closely with us to get rid of it. We will prevail together. It's very important. So it's not a discussion about Asian Americans who the president values and prizes as citizens of this great country. It is an indictment of China for letting this virus get here. And I would also point out that the media blames President Trump for using the terms China virus and Wuhan virus when they themselves have used these very terms. The New York Times called it the Chinese coronavirus, Reuters the Chinese virus, CNN the Chinese coronavirus on January 20th, Washington Post January 21st Chinese coronavirus, and I have more than a dozen other examples. A separate category, Kaylee. Kung flu is extremely offensive to many people in the Asian American community. To be clear, are you saying the White House does not believe it is racist? To be clear, I think the media is trying to play games uh, with the terminology of this virus, where the focus should be on the fact that China let this out of their country. The same phrase that the media roundly now condemns has been used by the media. I can go more examples. Wuhan virus, CNN said on January 22nd. I um, mean, we can go on and on and on. So while the media wants to focus on nomenclature, the president's going to focus on action. Yes. Um, Kaylee, the president and the attorney general over the weekend offered different explanations behind the firing of Jeffrey Berman, the U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York. Uh, can you clarify now why Berman was dismissed and if it was at the president's request? Well, I think that they were very much in sync this weekend, um, the attorney general and the president. And here is what happened. Um, the president held Mr. Clayton in very high regard, wanted to nominate him uh, to this position um, in SDNY to keep him in the government as he returned to New York. Uh, Barr was working on a smooth transition, and when Berman chose to respond in the way that he did, uh, he came to the president, and the president agreed um, and fired this individual, Mr. Berman, um, as Mr. Clayton uh, now will, in time, get to that position. But why was Mr. Berman being dismissed in the first place? Because Mr. Clayton uh, wanted to go back to New York City. We wanted to keep him in government, and therefore he was given the position at SDNY. But why did the president, I have two questions, but why why did the president say he wasn't involved in the firing of Jeff Berman when the attorney general said he, the president was the one who fired him? Because the attorney general was taking the lead on this matter, he did come to the president and report to him uh, when Mr. Berman decided not to leave. And at that point is when the president agreed with the decision of the attorney general and the, to fire uh, Mr. Berman and to promote Mr. Clayton. So he was involved in it then? He was involved in the sign-off capacity. Um, he was not, A.G. Barr was leading the way, but in the sign-off capacity, yes, the president was. So my second question on testing is, you said the president made that comment in just about having people slow down the testing. The vice president just said that it was made in passing. When Pierre Navarro said it was tongue-in-cheek. But when the president himself was just asked by a reporter like an hour ago, he did not say that he was just joking when he said that he told officials to slow down the testing. The president instead used that opportunity to extol the fact that we've done more than 25 million tests, uh, that we're finding more people because we're doing more testing. And I would note that what the vice president said and Peter Navarro, whether it's in jest and passing um, or tongue in cheek, those are all synonymous. Well, why is that yes. funny? Justin. And I just want to note, to, to follow up on BJ, I don't, you don't even have to answer this. The media has never called it the Kung Flu. Calling it the Chinese coronavirus and calling it the Kung Flu are very different. The media, things. the media and your network the specifically the called it the Kung Flu. The media and your network specifically have repeatedly they used the term virus. China virus Completely. and Wuhan virus and then gone on to deride the president as somehow uh, using a term that they th themselves have never used. So we can go it's through CNN's history. Term, I'd be more that. than happy to go through CNN's history. On February 9th, you guys talked about the
the Wuhan coronavirus on January 23rd. You guys talked about the Wuhan coronavirus on January 22nd, the Wuhan virus. I can write it all out for you calling it the and detail it for you in an email. Kaylee, yes, Scott Justin. To admit that. It is not the same thing as calling it the yes, Justin. flu. Um, I, I first want to just follow on uh, 